Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. So I have a book haul today, which I'm super excited about because my book buying has been cut way back in recent months. So in April, yeah. So in April, I got a new laptop and because of the expense of the laptop, my book money has been cut way back. So there haven't been as many book hauls on the channel recently and definitely going forward for the next little while anyway, they're not gonna be as big as usual. I mean, books is what I wanna spend my money on, but I gotta pay off my new baby first. So this is a okay sized book haul, I guess. Only two physical books though. I have two vintage books, uh, one pre-order that I wanted to talk to you guys about because I wanted to give a little plug to this author and the others I downloaded on Audible. So starting out with the physical books, I got these two on eBay. Um, luckily, they were only $2.75 plus shipping, of course. The only thing was is they arrived in condition that, you know, was a little under what I would normally accept, but still happy to have them for the collection. They're not in too bad shape. So the first one is Party Line. So this is a point horror book by A. Bates. Now from what I hear, this one is not a fantastic point horror book, but of course still wanted it for the collection and I still want to check it out. So um, we follow a guy named Mark and I think he's a little bit of an outcast and he keeps calling what they call the party line. So it says, Mark can't stop calling the party line. It's easier to talk to girls when nobody knows who you are. So I think Mark is a little bit of a geek, a little bit of an outcast. And you know, like I say, he gets his, meets his friends and stuff through this party line. So girls start going missing in his town and he thinks it has something to do with the party line. So it says here, who is the smooth talker he keeps hearing over and over? The one with the low creepy voice. Mark knows he's heard that voice before. Could it be his friend Todd or Robbie or a teacher? So Mark is convinced that the missing girls have something to do with this party line that he keeps calling. So excited to have that one for the collection. It is a little bit torn here uh, and it's, you know, the edges are pretty ratty, but still happy to have it. And it was a great bargain at 275. So the next physical book that I have is The Cheerleader by Caroline B. Cooney. And it says on the front here, she would do anything to be popular. And so we follow, um, Althea. And I believe this is the first book to another one that I have on the shelf here. It's called The Vampire or The Last Vampire, one or the other. And it says, the cheerleader, beautiful and popular. The girl that Althea longs to be. She's a nobody. She gets no phone, phone calls, shares no laughter, has no friends. Then in the strange dark circular tower, she meets the vampire. Suppose, he says with an evil smile, that I could make you popular. All Althea has to do is agree to a simple bargain, an evil bargain. So she basically does this vampire's bidding in order to become popular. And of course we know that's probably not gonna go too well for our main character here. So this one is in a little bit better condition uh, and I forgot to tell you guys the dates. So this one is from June, 1991. And I believe Party Line is a 1993. Oh, it's actually older, June 1989. So considering the age of this book, it's still in pretty decent shape. So happy with these two. And then the book that I pre-ordered on my Kindle is one that I wanted to tell you guys about. It's not out until August the 1st, but I wanted to get my hands on it right now. And uh, I wanted to tell you guys about it. It's called Mandy and it's by Stephanie Sparks. So I've discussed Stephanie Sparks's books a few times on the channel and She's, uh, I think two of the three books that I read from her were five star reads and the other one was a four star. She writes very fast paced horror novellas and I've enjoyed all of her work. I really like her writing style and she is the queen of the twist ending. So this one, we follow a girl named Mandy, obviously. So one night in the middle of the night, she answers frantic knocking at her door. 
So when she answers the door, there's a guy on the other side and he's kind of frantic saying that his friend Robbie had just been killed in a drunk driving accident. And Mandy has kind of a secret power to be able to bring people back um, from the dead. So it says here, her gift is more like a curse when Robbie turns out to be anything but the golden boy Mandy expected. Corrupt and violent, Robbie has an insatiable hunger for death and destruction, and he will stop at nothing to exploit Mandy's secret for his own gain. But soon Robbie discovers that when you mess with the weird girl, you get more than you bargained for. So that is right up my alley and it does have some content warnings here it says themes related to necrophilia body horror kidnapping car accidents consent violence sexual violence and death reader reader discretion is advised so just throwing that out there for you guys but i love stephanie sparks's writing and i really wanted to help her spread the word about the new book so i will leave a link down below to stephanie sparks's uh instagram page as well as a link to the pre-order that you can do on amazon so super super excited for mandy to come out in august so for the audiobooks that I downloaded this month, the first one is called Wilding Hall by Elizabeth Hand. And this sounds so good. It's about an old creepy house, a mansion in the English countryside, with all sorts of secrets and everything. So here we follow a legendary British acid folk band and they're recording a new album and they record it in the mansion in Wilding Hall. And while they're there some creepy stuff starts happening and i believe it's their lead singer ends up going missing never to be seen again and it says now years later the surviving musicians and their friends and lovers including a psychic a photographer and the band's manager meet with a young documentary filmmaker to tell their own versions of what happened during that summer but whose story is the true one and what really happened to julian blake so this seems like, you know, kind of one murder mystery or one story told from, you know, everyone's point of view and you've got to try to figure out who's telling the true story. So that sounds super good. And like I said, on against the backdrop of an old English estate, I mean, it's right up my alley. So really high hopes for that one. So the next book I downloaded onto my Audible is Red X by David Demchuk, and I feel like I'm a little bit late to the game with this one. I know a lot of booktubers who have read this, and it seems like everyone has the same sort of reaction to it, that it's not what they were expecting, but still a really, really good book. So um, this centers around David Demchuk's own experiences within the gay village in Toronto. And I'm very well versed in the uh, disappearances and murders that were happening in the gay village in Toronto um, over the past few decades. So I thought that this one would fit right in there. So it says, a hunted community, a hunted author, a horror that spans centuries. So this has to do a lot with the, like I said, the disappearances in that village, but it also is against the backdrop of being marginalized and um, the police reaction to the gay village and all of that sort of thing. So because I know so much about it and I've listened to so many podcasts um, about the disappearances and the murders, I won't get into, you know, spoiling anything for, um, you know, the murder or anything like that but I thought this would fit right in there and it would be a great read, especially given the time of year it is as well. So hoping to get to this one in June, we'll see how it goes. I've been very much focusing on mood reading lately um, to not you know, focus on TBRs or to get to specific things during specific times so I can start to get out of this slump that I've been in um, or in and out of, I guess I should say, because it's like I'll go into a slump and then I'll come out a little bit and then I'll go back in. So hoping to break out of that. So hopefully I can get to this one fairly soon. High hopes for it, um, especially because it's told from kind of a first person perspective through David Demchuk. And I believe he's one of the narrators on the book as well. So super excited for this one. 
And then the next two books that I've downloaded from Audible um, were actually books that I heard through Rachel over at the Shades of Orange. So this is these are two books in the past couple of months that as soon as I heard her talking about them, I went into my Audible right away and downloaded them. So totally blaming Rachel for these purchases. Of course, you know, she had to twist my rubber arm to purchase them. But the first one is Dare Me by Megan Abbott. And this one revolves around, it's kind of like a, a young adult book, and it revolves around a cheerleading squad and their very young coach who comes in. She's a new coach and she very much befriends the girls and they become a whole clique within the uh, within their high school. So the two main characters are best friends Addie and Beth and they are you know members of this cheerleading squad and then uh, a suicide happens and the cheerleading squad and the coach are kind of the central focus of the police. So don't know much outside of that other than what it says here. It says, after the first wave of shock and grief, Addie tries to uncover the truth behind the death and learns that the boundary between loyalty and love can be dangerous terrain. So I'm getting very much um, Pretty Little Liars vibes from this which funny enough, I'm actually re-watching Pretty Little Liars right now. I haven't watched it for several years. I'm really enjoying the rewatch. So I think this book is actually gonna fit right in after I watch all seven seasons of that. So I'm hoping to get to this one fairly soon, probably not this month, but uh, coming up here, it sounds really, really intriguing to me. And I, I'm really, really hoping that it's going to be fast paced and it's going to be a really good YA novel because we all know that I haven't been entirely happy with my YA novels lately. And then the last book that I downloaded is called Don't Call It a Cult. And this one, like I said, I just heard it from Rachel over at the Shades of Orange, I believe yesterday or the day before. And this is a nonfiction book and it revolves around Keith Raniere and the cult or the not cult of Nexium. And if you've never heard about that, it's wild please go look up Keith Raniere and Nexium. It's fantastic. I've listened to several podcasts about Nexium um, and watched several documentaries and I've heard from Sarah Berman herself who's the author of this book. So um, again because I know so much about the history of this and all of that sort of thing. I really wanted to download this one. Thought it was a great thing to spend uh, my credit on that I just got. So I downloaded it immediately. Rachel says it's really good and I'm hoping that it goes into a lot of depth uh, like the podcasts did. A couple of the documentaries that I watched, they were good but they didn't go far enough into like the inner workings and what was actually going on in this cult and or non-cult, whatever you want to call it. So really hoping to get to this one fairly soon. Um, there's a lot of books that I want to get to fairly soon, so hopefully I can fit this one in. I really, really love true crime and nonfiction audiobooks, especially for when I go for my walk. So hoping to get to this one, like I said, fairly soon. And um, the podcast that I really enjoyed is called Escaping Nexium. It's done by CBC Podcasts. So I will link um, that down below for you guys too if you're interested. And yeah, so this one sounds great. And I like to balance my fiction books with some nonfiction as well. So that's everything that I have for the book haul for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please, if you did, make sure to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a question or a comment down below because you know I love chatting with you guys. But until next time, stay spooky, everybody. Bye.